This week on ANN, an Adventist church in the U.S. state of Michigan holds an event to combat violence in their community. Adventists in Ghana helped the West African nation plant more than 5 million trees. And later, we sit down with prayer coordinator Melody Mason to talk about the upcoming day of prayer and fasting. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, from June 10 through 13, the Harbor of Hope Adventist Church held the final play, an event that brought families together to set the tone for a positive, productive, and peaceful summer in the city of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Pastor of the Harbor of Hope Church, Taurus Montgomery, said, Instead of sitting back and complaining about the youth, we decided to do something, something that will showcase opportunities that are available to the youth set the tone towards preventing an uptick of summer violence, unite the community and leaders around the shared goal of youth empowerment, and spread love and hope throughout the city. Montgomery has pastored the church for nine years and lives with his family in Benton Harbor. The four-day event had several components, including exhibit booths, giveaways, community service, food vendors, a talent show, and community grants. Representatives from more than 20 organizations shared information on health and wellness, financial literacy, education, and other topics with attendees. Teams in the charity basketball tournament competed for a $1,000 prize and a chance to donate $2,500 to the charity they each represented. The organization with the most social media shares received the first pick of the basketball team to represent them. The Benton Harbor Mentoring Organization, 400 Men, had the first pick and chose Benton Harbor All-Stars, which placed second in the tournament. The organization was awarded $1,500. Peace of Life of Benton Harbor chose the Oakwood University team who placed first. Peace of Life was awarded $2,500. The African American History Museum of Benton Harbor receives a $1,000 community grant. The community impact portion consisted of participants going to a family dollar store, Phillips 66 gas station, Marathon Gas Station, Carter Foods, and a barber shop to bless community residents with free groceries, gas, haircuts, and prayers. The Harbor of Hope Church coordinated this event, which attracted over 400 attendees by utilizing the skills of over 100 volunteers and a planning committee that met over the course of nine months. Project manager Shannon Trey Carton said that it was obvious God picked very specific people with complementary skills to make the event a success. She said, and as a side, planning the final play really revived my relationship with God. It reminded me of the excitement that comes when you dedicate your time and talents to God and blessing his children. Another final play event is planned for next June. If you wanna know how you can get involved or learn more, visit onefinalplay.com. On June 11, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ghana joined the national government's Green Ghana Project tree planting drive. The initiative aims to plant 5 million trees in a single day. Local Adventist leaders project that their members, institutions, administrative offices, schools, and hospitals will plant 1 million out of 5 million trees. President of the Adventist Church in Southern Ghana, Thomas Teki Okran, joined members of the Diplomatic Corp and other dignitaries to plant a tree on behalf of the Adventist Church. His tree, marked F6, stands in the yard of the Ghana Seismology Department in the capital city of Ghana. Akron stated that the church is proud to associate itself with the Green Ghana Project because we are called to care for the earth. Earlier in the week, the two union presidents in Ghana appealed to church members through messages on Hope TV Ghana to join the campaign by planting and caring for the saplings. The church is running a hashtag. Hashtag SDA Green GH and has encouraged members and institutions to share pictures on social media with that tag. Taking care of your health is essential to maintain your vigor and improve your appearance. Not everyone has access to quality medical service, however. Noting this need, Instituto Agua Viva, in partnership with the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Brazil, set up a small medical center with dental, clinical, psychological, and psychiatric care, all free for low-income people. The clinic saw 10 patients a day to avoid contamination by COVID-19. 
Due to the lack of easily accessible dental care, tooth decay and other oral problems have been growing in large needy communities. The Adventist Church in South America sent this report. Um sorriso bonito é essencial na hora de causar uma boa primeira impressão. Mas essa vitrine social tem seu preço e nem todos têm condição de manter. Pensando nisso, o Instituto Água Viva, em parceria com a ADRA, disponibilizou uma clínica móvel com atendimento odontológico e outros serviços médicos para pessoas de baixa renda. A van é toda equipada por dentro. Existe toda uma aparelhagem completa para receber os pacientes. Nela, são realizadas consultas com o clínico geral, psicólogo, psiquiatra e até dentista. Um mini centro médico que oferece serviços essenciais para as comunidades que precisam. Por essas pessoas não terem esse acesso, tem muitos problemas bucais. Realmente, é, são vários procedimentos que essas pessoas precisam passar. Sim, a gente fica feliz e é muito dificultoso a gente ter a oportunidade de conseguir esse atendimento pelo, pelo público, pelo SUS. Os atendimentos foram realizados no Residencial Itaberaba, localizado na cidade de Juazeiro, no norte da Bahia. Ainda no município, a clínica também atendeu o Hospital Psiquiátrico Nossa Senhora de Fátima, o líder dos adventistas na região norte baiana, pastor Cleiton Mota, também esteve presente e orou por todos. A equipe do sanatório agradeceu o Instituto Água Viva e a Igreja Adventista. Agradeço primeiramente a Deus pela grande contribuição que a Igreja Adventista vem fazendo com esse projeto lindo que alcança as pessoas mais vulneráveis, junto com o nosso pastor presidente, com sua comitiva e sua equipe. É, somos muito gratos por toda a colaboração. Os voluntários da ADRA intermediaram toda a ação, onde também contemplaram mais de 25 famílias de baixa renda com cartões de alimentação para compras em supermercado. Eles vão me ajudar para me comprar alimentos para meus filhos, que nesse momento eu estou precisando muito, e eu fiquei muito feliz quando o pastor me deu a notícia, e vai me ajudar muito. O residencial aqui ele é muito carente, né? Tem pessoas que têm muita necessidade, pessoas que nos relataram também que já estão há semanas com dor de dente, mas não tem um atendimento para eles, a não ser que seja pago. Então essa ação vai beneficiar muito essas pessoas que serão atendidas para que elas possam ter um atendimento, possam ter, de certa forma, uma cura física, né? Recently, an MRI tech at Adventist Health Orlando was reunited with his son, who currently serves in the United States Air Forces. The son surprised his father with the help of the Advent Health Orlando Imaging Director to make this reunion happen. Advent Health sent this report. It is always tough for a parent to be separated from their child, no matter that child's age. Recently, an amazing moment for one of our MRI techs and his adult son. Videographer David Maddox shows you. And walk towards that tree. <laughs> What the? You gotta be kidding me. Howard's son reached out and wanted to just surprise his dad, but really didn't know how to do it. He hadn't seen his dad since before he went into the service. Right away we were like, okay, we have got to capture this. Since they missed my graduation, I figured this was a really great opportunity to kind of um, make something special out of it. I had no clue. This is way beyond anything I've ever seen him do before and it's amazing. It actually brought tears to my eyes. I can't believe it. Hold on. Howard's worked here for over 20 years for Advent Health and just being able to give them a, a brief moment of a family connection in front of us is like part of our family. I, I had tears watching him, you know, see his son for the first time. You're looking great, man. Definitely got emotional, you know. Um, the only correspondence I have with my family were just through letters the whole time. That's crazy. Yeah, we can open it. It was really great to be embraced. You know, I love my parents and they love me and it's great to feel that feeling. Almost every male member of my family ever since the Revolutionary War has been involved in the military in this country. I've never felt more whole than I do right now. In Orlando, Tom Johnson for Advent Health. Coming up, we we'll sit down with Melody Mason, United in Prayer Coordinator for the World Church, to talk about the upcoming day of fasting and prayer. We'll be right back after the break.
Why is there evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I Believe Bible. Welcome back. Did you know that the first Sabbath of every quarter is set aside as a day of prayer and fasting for the World Church? You're not too late to participate in the third quarter event, which takes place Sabbath, July 3rd. Why do we have a day of prayer and fasting? What is the importance of having such an event in today's world? We sat down with Melody Mason, prayer coordinator and author of this year's Day of Prayer and Fasting Materials, to find out why this day is so important and how you can join Adventists around the world in prayer. Hi, Melody. Welcome to AN. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're at Michigan Camp Meeting today, so thank you for taking the time to visit us and join us for um, the conversation about prayer and fasting. Amen. Glad to be with you. Um, so July 3rd is one of the Sabbaths the Seventh Avenue Church has set aside for corporate prayer and fasting. Um, we do this four times a year and also the 10 days of prayer, but we do this specific thing four times a year. Why has the church set aside four Sabbaths a year to focus on prayer and fasting? Well, there's a power as we come together in unity and as we pray together in unity, of course, God's word tells us uh, when two or three are gathered together, he's in their name. Uh, he's in their midst. He is with us. But this corporate day of prayer and fasting is just a beautiful time for us to press together as a church uh, with one vision, with one prayer focus, uh, seeking him together. And so that's that's why we've been doing it, I think, for a number, a number of years now. And what a blessing it's been. That's so awesome. And I want to talk, I have one more question because um, before we get to our theme and a special event that you're having, but we, we do talk about prayer a lot, but we also, but we don't talk about fasting a lot. Um, so if we say, okay, we're going to pray for 24 hours, that seems, okay, we'll pray. But to fast for 24 hours seems a little daunting, but why do we fast? Like what is, what is sort of a spiritual benefit to fasting? Fasting is, 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 a way to remove distractions, um, kind of put aside the clutter, kind of put aside uh, different things, and to spend even more time focusing. Uh, it's something that really, I believe, prepares us for the greater blessing that want, God wants to give. And you notice when we look at scripture, it doesn't, you know, fasting is given, it doesn't say if you fast. It says when you fast. And if you look at the stories throughout scripture, all of God's great men and women that we, we know of the stories in the Bible, they fasted and prayed and deliverance from this, deliverance from that. So it's just a beautiful opportunity to seek the Lord in a, in a fresh way. It's not something like, oh, we're earning answers to prayer. We're earning God's favor. It's not about that at all, it's, but it's, it's putting aside dis distractions. And I want to say one thing. Uh, yeah. Pastor Dave Morris says, and I just love it. And he says, we fast from the world so that we can feast on Jesus. And that's oh, the whole thing. This year's theme is um, praying for a heart like Jesus. Can you tell us a little bit about, about more of like the theme that we're having? But also, can you tell us about this very special event that we're having in, in um, conjunction with this special day of prayer and fasting? Yeah, I'd love to do that. I just want to share a, a brief thought it comes from one of my book, uh, favorite books, Christ Logic Lessons. And um, it's actually written here, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Amen. So our our goal, this specific day of prayer and fasting, this whole year we've been focusing on different things to, to grow our character, to help us be better witnesses for his glory. Our goal is to, to have the heart of Jesus. And we don't have the heart of Jesus. We're selfish. We're self-centered. We're focused on ourselves. And we live in a world that's perishing. 
all around us. And, you know, John 13, 35 says, uh, by this, they will know that they are my disciples if they have love one for another. So that's our goal, pressing together and saying, Lord, change my heart. Make me like you. Give me a heart for others and a heart that will be ready, you know, uh, when you come back, because we know he's coming soon. So to help emphasize that even more, we have something really, really special. Of course, we encourage everyone, you know, to be part of this event with their yeah. churches. This is a worldwide church event, and uh, there's materials to help us uh, focus on this specific aspect in our prayers during this July 3rd Sabbath. But we have something extra special that you alluded to, and that is a 24-hour prayer event. And some people may have been part of the recent GC camp meeting where we had a prayer room, 24-hour prayer room going for four days and it was beautiful. Well, we're going to do that again only for one day, for 24 hours. And the whole theme is the focus will actually be praying for brothers and sisters in India and their needs each time. Um, the 24-7 United Prayer Group uh, combines with Music Verse to do this event. Wow. We're picking a specific country and we're working together on this. But we'll be praying for India, brothers and sisters in India as we also pray that God would give us a heart like Jesus. So I'm, I'm so excited about this event. That's awesome. And where can people join this event? Because the people can yeah. actually come in to a Zoom call and join the, the event and pray together as a whole corporate church. Yes. And so this event actually is going to start the evening of July 2nd. So it's going to be a 24-hour cycle. Mm -hmm. It'll start 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 2nd. And we'll go for 24 hours. And every hour there'll be prayer, there'll be music, and just inspiration to draw us together. And we'll be praying together via Zoom. People can That's learn awesome. how to be part of this by going to the website to. 247 United Prayer dot O R G. That's 247 United Prayer dot O R G. And um of course, yeah, we'll know, have we'll, right here for them. Yeah, we'll have yeah, we'll have the link here. And we'll also, of course, be pushing that from the revival and reformation dot O R G website as well. That's so great because you know, when we pray as a corporate church, it's 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 such a powerful thing because we're praying as a church family. And like you said, when two or three or more gathered in my name there, his presence will be. And so like we will have millions of people praying for India around the world and they desperately, they have, it's a desperate time for them right now. Yeah. I just want to share just briefly, um, you know, as we can gather together with our churches in per person, it's so powerful. And I think that that's the best if we can meet together with our brothers and sisters. But of course, because of the different things, Things happening in our world right now. It's been hard. Yeah. And I just want to share from this last camp meeting in the prayer room that we had going on. I had questions, you know, we're doing this online prayer room. Are people really going to experience the same thing? Is it really going to be a blessing? And we had so many testimonies. One woman, one woman shared with us, she says, this is one of the best uh, camp meetings events I've ever attended. I can feel yeah. the Holy Spirit here. And I've just been in the Zoom call, you know, for hours at a time. God brought us together over Zoom from all these different places around the world. It was just amazing. So, you know, you're, you're not going to feel isolated. You jump on and you find that you have brothers and sisters around the world, all these different countries. We're coming together in the unity of the Spirit, praying for the same thing. And uh, it's, it's powerful. God really, God really blessed. And we know he's going to bless this Sabbath. Well, I'm excited to see that happen. I'm just really excited to see. And again, they can go to 247unitedprayer.org, 247unitedprayer.org, and they can find more information on the Revival and Reformation website, and we will link to both of those. Amen. So, Melody, thank you so much for joining us again. You're, I know you're at camp meeting right now, and thank God that camp meeting is coming back a little piece of our world um, returning to normal. So thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us today for Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure, Jennifer. Coming up, Ashley Chisholm is here with This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares the exciting news from the Adventist University of Venezuela. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, 
but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh Day Adventists. Welcome back. In 2016, the Adventist University of Venezuela opened a center of influence so students could learn English, Portuguese, and French. Since then, the center has evolved and now opens its doors to the entire community, reaching people who have never heard the Adventist message. Adventist Mission has more. Something new and exciting was happening on campus at the Adventist University of Venezuela. Students and faculty from the theology department wanted to do something to have a lasting impact on the people around them. In 2016, they opened the Center of Languages, giving university students access to learning English, Portuguese, and French. Language skills were in high demand. I had the privilege of seeing the birth of the Center of Languages and organizing the curricular contents of the courses that were taught. It was a great challenge, but with the support of my team of teachers, we were able to advance in fulfilling the mission. This Center of Influence has since evolved and now opens its doors to the entire community, many of whom are not familiar with the Adventist message. For a year, I taught English in the Center of Language. Afterward, I received the responsibility of uh, coordinating the Center of Language. In 2019, we received a lot of students that were unbelievers. So we uh, notice that and create some strategies for reach them and uh, share with them about the gospel. A center of influence is the most effective way to present the gospel to those who do not know Christ. It is an easy way to show to others the way through your lifestyle. The courses include devotionals and spiritual discussions that have piqued the interest of some students. One of the most excellent things about the course that Professor Anthony passed into us the spiritual seeds that he sowed in each of our heart. It has helped me in my personal, social, and communicational development with another people, and the devotional helped me in my spiritual life. I would describe the experience in the Center of Languages as an opportunity that it motivated me to keep learning English and thanks to all the values that it gave me, I'm able to communicate in the language of English in the United States. In 2020, despite the challenges caused by the pandemic, the Center of Influence continued teaching its classes online, attending 138 students, 16 of them non-Adventists. This Center of Influence will continue working to reach the unreached. As the school keeps expanding, they have to adapt to constant changes and growing demand. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will assist this university and others across the inter-American region to further develop centers of influence. The Center of Influence of INAP and Zeta Ben invites all the members of the 70th Adventist World Church to generously contribute the 13th Sabbath offering and thus support the development of the missionary projects in this region of the world. Thank you for your kindness. In UNAP, we will go. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting adventismission.org. 
then click on videos on the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the Burrell family and their contribution to the Adventist church. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. This week, from June 20th through June 25th, 1883, a camp meeting was held on the farm of Alfred O. Burrell, who at that time was living near Alma, Michigan, with his family. Born in 1844 in Maine, Burrell began keeping the Sabbath in 1866. In 1868, he, his wife Nancy, and their daughter Carrie moved to Battle Creek, Michigan. From there, he began ministerial work with Isaac Van Horn in the state of Ohio. Sadly, Nancy died in 1869. Alfred then married Abigail Hawkins, and they had three children, Ellen, Cortez, and Rebecca, before Abigail's death in 1891. In 1875, Burrell was ordained as a gospel minister and continued his evangelistic work. The Burrell family spent time living and working in various states in the United States and in Ontario and British Columbia in Canada. In 1920, Alfred and his third wife, Lucilia, moved to Chico, California, where Alfred died in 1922 and Lucilia in 1941. Alfred and Abigail's daughter, Ellen, served as a missionary teacher in South Africa, first in King Williamstown and later at Claremont Union College. She returned to the States in 1905 and a year later married Dr. Ulysses C. Fadiber. Ellen then joined her new husband in the work he was doing in Mexico until 1912, when they were called to serve in the Philippines. They returned to the States in 1921 and settled in Arizona, where Ulysses died in 1947 and Ellen in 1963. In some ways, Adventist history was not that long ago. It's very possible that someone in our audience today remembers meeting an aged Ellen Fetiber as a child. If so, they probably weren't that much older than she was when she attended the camp meeting held in 1883 on her family farm during this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching a &N. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. The passage says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to this royal position for such a time as this. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time. God bless. Take care.